How you going there guys? Diesel from Getting Around Isles, Camper Trailer Travelling. Thanks for joining us. So we're off to a bit of a late start this morning. We've actually got quite a few hours drive. We're heading north of Perth for this one. So it's going to be some nice weather. Summer's here finally and we, um, we can't wait to get into it. So if you haven't already, grab yourself a coldie or a coffee and, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. All right, good morning. So anyway, we made the four hour drive here to Dongara. We arrived in about four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And, and uh, yeah, we got all set up here. It was pretty windy last night and we hadn't even finished getting set up and Hurley had a massive stack in his bike and it's just gonna be too hard to film. So here we are this morning. So we're currently staying here at the Dongara Tourist Park. I think it worked out to be 70 or 80 bucks a night. I'll chuck it up on the screen here how much it was. Now at this point I don't know a lot about the town. We've driven through it quite a few times. But yeah, it's obviously it's right on the beach here, so we thought we'd give it a shot. So today is New Year's Eve and we're both gonna get some brekkie sorted and we'll jump on the phone and you know, try and work out where we're gonna go. Now if there's one thing I do want to say, and I know I say it every video, but I don't want it to be lost on is just how much we appreciate your support. It's really nice and, and really inspiring to hear, hear your feedback and your thoughts and different things. And, and it motivates us to keep going with this. So with all that in mind, if you can in the comments, I'd love to know if you got away for Christmas or New Year's, and let me know where you went. I'd love to hear it even you know feel free to tell me a bit about it you know we'd like to check it check out some new places for ourselves so anyway I'm gonna get myself fed here and and uh, we'll give a look around and I do, do, do push pineapples, break the tree. <laughs> in case you're wondering the guitar isn't out of tune that's just the need to start playing <laughs> Okay, so I've had a bit of a change of plans. I'll, uh, I'll have to give you a look around the park and the area a bit later on, but I need to suggest the, uh, the Dongra markets. Now, last time we went to a markets on the road like this was Broome. Yeah, and that's why I got my necklace. That's right. It's pretty cool, wasn't it? Where's that necklace now? He was actually wearing it the other day. Oh, I think yeah. I saw it outside. Still got uh, wrong way, Dad, but that's okay. That's the wrong way? Okay. Oh. Directions are helpful before All I right, turn Hallie, the corner. you're in charge of directions, okay? Anyway, it's, we had a pretty windy night. We blowing 45, 50, oh, I don't know, I needed to set to about one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, the top of the camper um, canvas was flapping pretty hard. So, a bit of a rough night for us all. Yes, anyway, we'll check back with you in a moment. were hit. I uh, really enjoyed it. Got a few things. Uh, I think everyone got something, didn't they? Except for Mum. What'd you get, Zach? Um, I got a crystal. It's pretty cool. Only for three dollars. It's only three bucks. That's a bargain. What about you, Hurley? A girl. How much you pay for? Five dollars. Five bucks. That's a bargain. And we um, got some uh, jerky. 
Yeah, there was a guy there, I think. Um, I, I hopefully would have put it up there. The guy had a, like a full stall of dog treats and um, he had heaps there. Hey, Funny mate. thing was, we're only um, sort of reasonably interested because we're walking past and someone else gave the dog gave the dog some treats. I thought, oh, we'll, we'll go and check it out. And she gave them to me, then I gave to yeah. the dog. Um, once we got, well, once they don't smell, we got them there, Mum. So oh, Candy Canine yeah. was the name of the guy. He's actually heading down to Perth. So um, he's in Geraldton. You can buy them per 100 grams or just get him back like that, which is pretty cool. And this other one there, I was walking past and this lady was sitting there with a little stool called um, Dinky Dye Spices. She had some bread there, she was just getting everyone to do a taste test and she sort of hit me up and said, here, try this. And it basically just looked like a heap of crumbs and spice and a bit of bread and didn't, didn't like much at all. So I said, no, I'm right once. She said, go on. I said, no, nah, I'm right. The second time, she said, go on. She wouldn't let it go. And uh, when I tasted it, um, it blew my mind, to be honest with you. So many flavors, it was, it was pretty crazy. So I <clears throat> managed to try a couple other ones and um, What's the first one we got here? So it was Clancy of the Overflow. Clancy of the Overflow, this one here, little bag. Uh, what was it, 10 bucks? I'll try this, was pretty good. What was the other one? Which flavour of Biltong? So it's Biltang. No, no, I'm not. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Bintang's like barley beer. Yeah, it's not Bintang, it's <laughs> the beer, it's called Biltong. Yeah, so we've got something we're gonna put on the roast for tonight. Can't wait, but, but again, these things here. The flavour in this was ridiculous. Totally wasn't expecting it and I'm glad she hassled me uh, to get into it. Anyway, we're going to have a quick look down the foreshore here now and boys and girls stretch their legs a bit. Alright, so you notice here, we're all protected here. And like I said to you before, it's blowing pretty hard here at the moment. It's going to do for the next couple of days before it gets, um, you know, stupidly hot. So it's basically blowing 45, 50k an hour at the moment. See there, so we had the back rig up last night. We've just opened up one of the windows there, so uh, anyone who is wondering, all these um, fly screens here. Sorry, couldn't get my words out there. They're all windows as well. They all either fold up like they do there, or you can actually bloody peg them down as well. So I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. See the end bit there again. These windows are closed for good reason because it's going to blow straight through. Just moved here. Apologise the wind on the camera. Not much I can do at the moment, unfortunately. It's all protected down the side there. The bottom bits down here are a little bit slack. Again, it's just because I haven't put the Yanex up a lot further. come on nicely now previous videos we talked about mold and using these things now this one here we actually left in the camper about three weeks the camper has been packed up for the water lines actually up to there so that's how much that's how much water's this thing's been soaking up and I need to see when we unpacked here as well there's actually a bit of mold uh, that's still existing on the flaps there but it is what it is so these things here, again, they come in different brands. This one here is just the cheaper Bunnings brand. Better quality ones you can get from um, Coles, Big W, and Bunnings whenever they bloody have them. But the um, the molds on the inside of one of the window flaps, though, so it could have been there a while. We just haven't seen it because we haven't opened the window. Nah, well, the inside was when I was looking at the mold last time. I tried to give it a bit of a clean up. Um, oh, no, no, I mean, no, on, so on the inside, the inside the of the bits. window flap. So you've got the window, and when yeah. it's done up, it looks fine. But then when I undid the window flap oh, gotcha. from the inside. The, outside the mold's bit. actually on the inside that's facing out. The inside of the outside bit. Yeah. Gotcha. The outside of the inside bit. Yeah, gotcha. So it could have been Did there. Did you follow that? The inside of the outside bit. Not the outside bit of the inside. The inside of the outside. Okay, so I've just been corrected. 
so it turned out the mold is on the outside of the inside bit now I'll show you what that means now for those of you easily confused like I am what she means is so this normally zips up there like that right and we've got we've got the mesh and then there's an outside bit that zips up but what Anita's saying is the inside of this bit where there's mold so whenever it rains like it rained for us in Anship and Savannah's um, rain in both spots um, which is only like three yeah two three four weeks ago the outside of the canvas actually soaks is actually soaked wet okay but having this in the inside here stops you from getting wet or stops the, the bed from getting wet so when you have days and days and days of rain the outside of the canvas soaks through then this bit soaks through and then whenever you touch this that's when the side of your beds or your sheets or your dunas like this actually bloody get wet and when I was you know going through all that most mold stuff the other day I didn't even think of checking inside this because these are closed most of the time it's only really now in summer we're starting to open up a lot of these things and have a crack but anyway there you go Just a heads up. So something I didn't do, put down baking paper on your stone there. It did stuck a little bit, but to make sure it doesn't happen for you. What's going on here guys? I'm trying to feed the dog your carrots. Yeah. Chloe did that. Yeah. Well, they're actually my carrots. Meanwhile, there's half a bloody carrot here in the floor because the kids are trying to give away the carrots to the dog. That was Hurley! Oh, okay. How many in mine? Have you? Tell so, you what, this looks pretty good, boys. You can get some. Oh, that crust is nice and crunchy. Stop it, Dad. Who would stop it, Dad? Mmm. Dad. Who is that? I said, I'll show you around camp. Uh, and around the caravan park, I can't do that because it's so bloody windy. It does give me the opportunity to give you an inside look at our, our setup here. This, is, if this isn't what we always use. Wherever we're going or whatever, you know, however long we're staying for, you know, we'll change things accordingly. But um, so we're here for four nights. Those of you who just only recently uh, found our channel and um, just got a camera trailer, actually looking at a camera trailer, it's actually quite a few of you. Um, I thought maybe this is a good opportunity to, to show you a bit. So in this trip here, we brought the Weber Cube with us. Now, when we travel around Australia, we actually just plonked it on a, this little King's um, table here as well, but we've actually since purchased the stand for it. It goes to the back of Jared. It is, it is pretty big. This one here I got recently, as I'm going to be using that for some um, off grid stuff. That's a 30 litre container. Filled it up before we left home, and um, there's our drinking water in there. As you can see here, while this sort of pops up here like this, and it's got the stove, but while we, you know, um, set up like we are now and we're going to be using Weber Cube for dinner. Use this here, nice big open area for preparing food and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we use the bucket here, so this is where the water goes and then whenever you're staying in car caravan parks, 90% of the time there's little drains to tip the water in, if not, um, we just find you know, your appropriate place to, to put that. And obviously you've got all the electronic stuff here to keep an eye on, so... So that's the rear tank, which is 120 litres, the front tank there make sure I'm pointing on it is 80 litres that one there is just the, the water tank off and on as you can see there they actually light up at night as well um, fridge obviously we're running the two fridges we're running the 75 litre and the 60 litre in the other side and that one there is obviously for the hot water now what do we use we're in the drawers here um, it's just all the condiments and and uh, glad wrap and those sorts of things and nine four drawers in there we don't really like closing all this sort of stuff up here because to us it doesn't feel like camping it doesn't feel like we're outside you know for those of you who like to go camping and you know hang inside the tent and, and uh keep out of the weather and all those types of things um that's awesome but for us we we hate doing this because it feels like we're sitting inside but fortunately what we managed to do is is this whole side here is actually folded up up the top there as well so it's actually um, three little elastic bands up there and it's clipped up all nicely. It all unzips from here and, and that way there we can still use the sidewall to stop all the wind from coming from underneath and suddenly it feels like it's open. So on this side here we use a 75 litre fridge. This side of the camper is bigger than the other side as well. So the other side we use a 60 litre Kings 
which isn't the best. The seals aren't that great, but it keeps drinks and the veggies and those types of things cold. It's actually a cigarette light on that side there. This one here has actually got the two USBs as well, so it's not uncommon just to grab a cable and chuck my phone on there and chuck them on charge. Now this one here we have been asked about quite a few times. Um, like today it's 33, 34. Tomorrow it's going to, you know, next few days going to be 37 and 43 and 44. So we're going to be using this one and we've got two, so we've got one inside, one outside here. But again, all it is, little six socket goes in there and power button there and on she goes. It's got two modes, it's got a low and a high mode. And Again, you probably can't even hear that, so it actually is pretty quiet. Got it from Bunnings. Um, the brand is Azito. I don't know, they're probably 79 bucks, something like that. Um, still sell them or still sell something like them anyway, but um, that's what we use in case you're wondering. Also as well, these do come with this little hook here. So this little hook here, we can actually hang it from the, the poles and those types of things, either out here or inside as well when we're sleeping. It's just our pantry, all the, all the bits and pieces of food, and. And uh, up here, this one actually goes through the other side. Um, again, which is my stuff spot. All the bits and pieces, and, like little bits of tools and, and tape and um, cable ties and those types of things. Anything I need to get to quick, um, that's where I'll find it. As you can see up there, that one there later on will plug into the fridge there. And I've actually got him on the roof there. That's an orange. Kings one, you actually get a white one as well, but that's just cable tied up there. There's one just along there as well. And in here, I think you can probably just see them through the gap there. There's two 12 volt sockets there, and they're actually both cigarette sockets. So that's where I'll plug the lights in there. Uh, the other one is actually used for the ignition switch for the stove, all the plastics. Free, um, plates, cups, lunch boxes, all that sort of stuff in there, all goes in there. And she got the switches there, so what I do is run the, the power from out there straight in here and, and bang that sorted. And this other one here is just running all the electronic stuff up here GoPros, phones, and all the kids' uh, bits and pieces. How you going, buddy? I just need to tell you that the Ocean Hendis place is perfect. Is it? It's nice, is it? Win. I also saw two jet skis. Two jet skis? Hey, Haley, while you're here, yeah. I'm going to show you on your arm. Yeah. Sure, if you can see it in the light there. Have a look at that. How'd you do that, buddy? I fell off my bike down the hill. <laughs> I went too fast. Yeah, sure did. Now, we were setting up here and must have been about 15 minutes in and got the bikes down and Haley zoomed off and that just reminds me of something actually. And don't worry, this isn't a shameless plug or a lead in a something I'm going to show you and there's a discount encoded for you. I don't know which one it is and I don't know where I need to go to, but if you haven't and you got kids, <clears throat> make sure you get a bloody first aid kit. This one here especially is pretty clumsy and always hurting himself or cutting himself or coming off his bike or falling over or something like that. So band-aids are, are a must, and uh, it's pretty basic. He's got some bandages and those types of things in there, but um, that always actually stores in the back of our car. So um, when we're on the road, there's always one there. And that's about it, eh? What are we gonna do now? I'm gonna play some cards. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's about it. For After we go to the beach. We go to the beach, are we? So anyway, that's about gonna do us here. We're gonna show you a bit around town, but we can't because it's just too windy. The, the beaches look crap. So we're just going to, again, being New Year's Eve, we're just going to have a few drinks and play some cards and hang out with the boys. And in a couple of hours' time, I'm going to fire the Weber and uh, we're going to get a roast going. Right eye front for a big game of cricket here. Zach's got his new stumps that he got for Christmas and his new cricket bat. Want to show you what your new cricket bat, mate? What type is it? It's a wooden one. Yeah, that's true. It's a grey nickels. Some stumps down there. Oh, we've got a crease there. All right, Zach. What are we going to do today? How many runs are we going to get? 100. All right, there we go. Like real cricket So something I, I always did. Well, hang on. 
I missed that. What happened here? Nothing. Not what I say here. <laughs> Just wasting my drink. Oh, that's I need to tip my drink all over for. Something I always did. Every Christmas we used to go camp at a caravan park. And uh, cricket was always uh, was always popular. So anyway, we're going to have a bit of a game here and the boys are pretty excited, but I'd love to know in the comments, what's your Christmas go-to for the kids and for the family? Or it could be the adults. Maybe like, well, I want a few short ones and a bit of chill music. But uh, let us know. I love, I love to hear what you guys like to do. No, because you're... Good mate. And tell me, do you call it tippy go or tip me go? Those who play cricket know what I mean. It was, uh, that was a pretty fun game of cricket there. All the best bits happen when you turn the camera off and Need an hour to catch off the car, off sack. But uh, I'm going to start preparing dinner now. What we have here is a pork rib roast. I've got to be honest with you, I've never done this before. Normally I just chuck it on as it is and make a bit, a bit of a crackle out of the skin, but. Those ones there are pretty big, so we're not going hungry tonight, that's for sure. It's something I like to do with meat. I'm not sure if everyone else does it, but I like to take the meat out and let it cool down to room temperature before I cook it. With the theory that um, if it's not going from cold to hot, the meat doesn't stress out as much. So what I've got here is Clancy of the overflow flavor here. And uh, this is the one, I, 10 bucks I paid for this little sachet from the markets this morning. There's something nearly forgot. These things happen, you're having a couple of drinks. Put a bit of, a bit of oil on these. Because obviously the oil is pretty generous. Oil obviously helps it all sink in. Yeah, mate. All right, a bit of aioli. That's ridiculous. How's yours, Nate? Really good. Nice and soft. The meat's nice and soft and juicy, and the flavour is actually seeping through the meat there. And that's just off the chain, so I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this now. That's that's seriously good. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up here for the night and um, chill out and a few drinks, a bit of music, and check back with you next year. <laughs>